visualizing the trees in space using spread. Now the idea here is those MCC files that you've been opening within FigTree, um, you can actually open in the program called Spread. Um, and you can do it for the, the discrete and the continuous models. Now, first of all, just to say that um, there's a whole website with Spread, uh, which has a lot of tutorials on there. So if you want to go through it, like in slower time, you can do that. Um, and in particular, oops, um, there's a, yeah, there's a very good tutorial for that. But let me show you what to do. So in spread, which should again be within the training software software spread. So the purpose of spread is you're going to load the, MC, the, the single MCC tree file and you are going to generate a KML file which you open in Google Earth. So if we look for our, if we look at the discrete tree to start with, and we're going to open the f uh, discrete regions file that we've been working with before. Although, in fact, you were looking just now at the host file, but now look at the regions file. So, oops, let me just try and find where those are. So it should be in practical data, MCC trees. Let's open the region file. OK, we need to set its sampling date. So this was the 6th of May, 2014. We need to make sure it knows that it's dealing with the regions. So we look for the regions The region attributes are region and now we need to set up the location coordinates of the region and I have already a file which has got the lat longs of those regions in there. Now I'm loading in the lat longs which is in original data selected five regions trait lat long so these are the lat longs of those. Click done OK, now, as with many of these things, there are lots of things you can fiddle with um, to do with the branch colours and the circle colours. However, we don't, need to, we, we don't need to change any of those. Um, what you do need to do is decide where to put the output. So I think just, um, we just call it regions output. And you click generate. And hopefully, it will have generated the XML. And if you click plot, hopefully, it will do it for me and not crash. But it might crash. Let's see if it's going to do it. Ah, OK. So now it's put those significant rates between the regions on a map. However, it's done something else as well. I'll just minimize this. What it has done is written, hopefully, uh, I think in here, in here, it's written a KML file. I can open the KML file in Google Earth. So I just open Google Earth, but it, what it actually shows in Google Earth is something, something better. OK, Google Earth. They were almost certainly crash. So now I go to open the KML file I just generated, which was in here. Um, hopefully, it should open it in Google Earth. I, I'm just going to reset the view of this. Um, reset the tilt and compass. 
There we go. Okay, so it's opened the file in Google Earth and plotted it in 3D. But it's done more than that. It's actually got a time scale on here. So I've slid the time scale back to the start. And now you can see, so from the start, where the virus started from, which region it went to, and which regions it's transmitting between through time. Oh, it's gone a bit quick. And the circles represent how many strains is there at that time. The other thing I will show you is, so also using spread, so that was the discrete tree. You know, in the lecture I talked about you can do it with continuous lat, lat longs. So you can go to continuous tree and open to generate the XML, the continuous tree file, which here, here, in practical data, oops, in practical data, MCC, <coughs> And this is the continuous tree file with lat long. So open this one. Set the date again. So that was the 6th of May 2014. The lat long attribute name is this. Uh, is this and this. Oops, sorry. And the output will just will just output to lat long. And again, you generate it. Hopefully, it doesn't crash. But it might do. Hopefully, plot it. It will work. Oh yes, it has. But for some reason, it hasn't shown me the circles. You can open that file within Google Earth as well. So what will output? <coughs> uh, in fact, I'm going to open the one I generated before for you before. So what's in so practical data KML. In this case, this is HBR two. The HBR stands for homogeneous Brownian motion. <laughs> open this. Uh, again, reset till the compass. And again, so this is in continuous traits. You can see exactly where it starts from and where it goes to and how it spreads. So we've made the KML in spread, but what I want you to focus on when you're looking at it in spread is do both analyses actually show the same thing? In particular, when you look at it carefully, it looks like there's an apparent transmission from Europe back into Asia with the discrete model. But what I want to know is, is this the same thing that happens with the continuous model? And why is it happening? Is it happening because we might have too few discrete traits and should we really make more regions to make it show the same thing?